Terran's Eclipse by Josh Alfred. Introduction, The Territorial Divide. The planet of Terran was a world of stark contrasts where beauty and devastation coexisted in a delicate, ever-shifting balance. Vast oceans and towering mountain ranges stretched across its surface, separating lands of light from lands steeped in darkness. Its two moons hung low in the sky, their pale light reflecting off the planet's surface like twin beacons guiding the way through the night. Yet despite the natural wonders, Terran was a world divided. The divide between Iliara and Urvan was not only physical, but spiritual, a war of ideologies that shaped the fate of the entire world. The light of Solandir clung to Terran's fragile surface, always threatened by the encroaching darkness of Nialros. Yet, for all its beauty and despair, Terran was a world of possibility, a planet where the future could be shaped by the will of its people, whether they chose to embrace the light or succumb to the shadow, the freedom of Iliara. The people of Iliara, guided by Solandir's light, lived in harmony with both nature and technology. Their society was founded on the principle of individual autonomy, where free will was not only respected, but celebrated. Solandir's gift to the Iliarans was the power of enlightenment, allowing them to develop advanced technologies including the protective headbands that blocked any form of mind control. These headbands were a physical manifestation of the people's belief in the sanctity of thought, a shield that symbolized their freedom to choose, to think, and to act of their own volition. This freedom permeated every aspect of Iliaran society. Their culture thrived on the idea that each person had a role to play, but that role was self-determined. Innovation flourished because creativity was not stifled. Art, science, and spirituality coexisted in a perfect balance. Solandir's light did not dictate the people's actions or force their obedience. Instead, it illuminated their paths, allowing each individual to choose their own way forward. In Iliara, governance was democratic, with decisions made by a council of elders and leaders like Lysandra. The council served to guide, not to control. Every voice mattered, and every choice was respected. Even in times of war, the Iliarans fought because they chose to defend their home, their freedom, and their way of life, not because they were compelled by some external force. Solandir's gifts were rooted in knowledge and empowerment, teaching the Iliarans that true strength came from within, from the ability to make one's own decisions. Their headbands were a defense not just against Malachor's dark magic, but against the very idea of subjugation. The light represented by Solandir was more than just a physical phenomenon. It was the embodiment of free will, the power of the individual mind to resist control and darkness. Malachor's totalitarian reign. In stark contrast, Malachor's rule over Urvan was a nightmare of oppression and control. Endowed with the dark gifts of Nialros, Malachor wielded his power to dominate the minds of his people, erasing any semblance of autonomy. His most terrifying ability was the power to remotely broadcast his will into the thoughts of every citizen, ensuring total obedience at all times. The people of Urvan had no private thoughts, no freedom to dissent or question. They were mere puppets, their strings pulled by the dark mage from his fortress in Valthorn. In Urvan, there was no democracy, no voice of the people. Malachor's word was law, and his rule was absolute. The citizens were conditioned to obey, not out of loyalty, but because they physically could not resist. Any who might have had the strength to fight back were swiftly subdued by Malachor's mind control, or worse, sacrificed to Nialros. The mage maintained power through fear and manipulation, sacrificing the weakest of his society to keep the others in line. It was a system built on the dehumanization of the population, reducing individuals to nothing more than tools for Malika's dark ambitions. Creativity, innovation, and independent thought were all but extinguished in Urvan. There was no art, no culture beyond what Malika allowed. The people worked, not for their own advancement or fulfillment, but because they were ordered to do so. Love, friendship, and family ties were all secondary to the Mage's will. 
those who showed signs of rebellion, or even the faintest flicker of free will, were crushed swiftly, either turned into mindless servants or sacrificed in rituals to sustain Malachar's power. While Iliara thrived on the principle of enlightenment, Malachor's governance was built on the suffocation of the mind. The people of Uruvan lived in a constant state of mental oppression, their thoughts no longer their own. Every action, every word, every moment was dictated by Malachor's magic, a constant, inescapable presence that weighed heavily on their souls. Malachor's totalitarian rule went beyond mere political control. It was a form of spiritual enslavement. The darkness of Nialros thrived on the suppression of free will, feeding on the despair of a people who had lost even the ability to question their suffering. In Malachor's eyes, the perfect society was one where every individual was subservient, where free will was eradicated in favor of complete and utter control. Chapter 1 The city of Urvan lay shrouded beneath a perpetual twilight the sun rarely peeking through the thick, oppressive clouds that hung like a curse over the land. The people moved like shadows themselves, hunched and silent, their eyes dull with the weight of endless obedience. At the center of this desolation stood the towering fortress of Valthorn, home to the dark mage who ruled them all. His name was Malachor, a man whose soul had long since been consumed by the will of the Dark Lord he worshipped. From his throne of onyx, etched with the runes of ancient and forbidden tongues, he watched over his people, not out of care or love, but as a shepherd watches over a flock destined for slaughter. Malachor had long ago pledged his life to Nyalros, the Lord of the Abyss, in exchange for the powers that now bent the world to his will. It had started with whispers in his mind, promises of unimaginable power. Soon, he was no longer simply Malachor of Urvan, but Malachor, Harbinger of Shadows. And with his title came the power to control minds, to manipulate thought, and to rule with an iron grip. His most terrifying gift from Nihilros was the ability to broadcast his will remotely, a magical network that stretched invisibly over the entire city, binding the minds of his subjects like strings to a puppet. With a mere thought, Malachor could fill the streets with his commands, slipping into the minds of the people as easily as a whisper in the wind. Today, the message was clear, transmitted directly into the brains of every citizen. The weak must pay tribute. A chill ran through the streets of Urvan as the people stopped in their tracks, fear flickering in their eyes. They knew what it meant. The weakest among them, those too old, too frail or too young, would be taken to the altar beneath Valthorn, their lives sacrificed to Nihilros. It was a ritual that occurred every full moon, and though the people hated it, they had no choice. Resistance was impossible. The mage's power could find them anywhere. Malika rose from his throne, his dark robes sweeping across the cold stone floor as he made his way to the balcony. His face, pale and sharp, was framed by long, raven-black hair, and his eyes burned with an unnatural light. Below him, he could see the city laid out like a map, the people moving, gathering the chosen ones for the sacrifice. You will feed my lord well tonight, he murmured, his voice dripping with satisfaction. His hand drifted over the black crystal embedded in the stone railing of the balcony, a conduit for his powers of control. The crystal thrummed with dark energy, connecting him to the minds of every soul within his reach. Across the city, families were already turning in their week. The young and the elderly herded toward the great plaza at the center of Urvan. No words were spoken. Malachor's will forbade it. The people moved as though in a trance, their hearts heavy, but their minds unable to resist the compulsion. None can defy me, Malachor whispered watching as his disciples dragged their neighbors to the sacrificial pyre. His remote broadcasting was absolute. No act, no thought, no whisper could be hidden from his mind. He controlled every aspect of their lives, what they ate, when they worked, whom they loved. He allowed them the illusion of free will only when it amused him. But today was a day of tribute. In the plaza, a vast crowd gathered around the towering altar of Nialros, a grotesque monument to their Dark Lord. 
The weakest stood at the base, eyes vacant, their bodies shaking but unable to flee. Chains of black energy snaked around their wrists, pulling them toward the stone dais. At the center of it all, a towering figure appeared. Dressed in robes as dark as the abyss itself, with eyes burning like molten fire, Malachor descended from the shadows. He made no sound as his feet touched the ground, but the air around him trembled with the weight of his presence. Tonight, we honor Nialros, he said, his voice amplified by the dark magic that permeated the very air. The people bowed their heads as his words dug into their minds like claws, filling them with a sense of twisted reverence. One by one, the weak were brought to the altar. The first was an elderly man, his body thin and frail. He did not struggle. Malika's control would not allow it. With a flick of the mage's wrist, the man was lifted into the air, his body suspended above the altar. For the glory of the abyss, Malika intoned, and with a wave of his hand, the man's life force was drained, his body collapsing into a husk as his soul was devoured by the Dark Lord. The people did not weep. They could not. Malakor's control was too strong. Sacrifice after sacrifice followed, each one fueling the power of Nihilros, each one feeding the darkness that gave Malakor his strength. As the final life was taken, the skies above Valthorn rumbled, and a dark, twisted satisfaction filled the mage's heart. Chapter 2 The island of Iliara was a paradise of light, a beacon in the endless expanse of the ocean. Bathed in the eternal radiance of Solandir's blessing, it gleamed like a jewel, its shores awash in a soft, golden glow. The skies above were clear and blue, unmarred by the clouds of shadow that plagued the mainland. Here, the sun never truly set, its gentle light creating a perpetual twilight as day blended seamlessly into night. The island itself was a marvel of natural beauty and technological wonder, where the harmony between the land and the people's advanced creations was palpable. Rolling hills of lush greenery stretched toward the horizon, their grasses tinged with an ethereal shimmer that danced in the light. Trees with silver bark and leaves that glowed faintly at night dotted the landscape, their roots deep and ancient, drawing strength from the light-infused soil. At the heart of the island stood the great capital city, Illurith. Built into the cliffs that overlooked the sea, the city's white and silver towers rose like crystalline spires, each one crowned with prisms of light that reflected the brilliance of Solandir's gift across the island. These towers were woven from a blend of natural stone and light-forged metal, a testament to the people's mastery over both the physical and the mystical. Winding paths of luminescent stone connected every part of the city, glowing softly beneath the feet of those who walked them. It was on this large island, far from the cursed lands of Urvan, across the seas, another power stirred. On a distant island, bathed in the pure light of a never-setting sun, a different kind of magic flourished. The people of Iliara worshipped a god of light, Solandir, the bringer of dawn. Unlike the dark powers that Malachor served, Solandir's gifts were those of enlightenment and protection. He had endowed the Ilarian people with knowledge that far surpassed the rest of the world, gifting them with advanced technology that blended seamlessly with their devotion to the light. One of these gifts was a powerful defense against Malachor's remote control, headbands made of silver embedded with shards of crystal that gleamed with light. These headbands, worn by every member of the tribe, created a shield within the mind, blocking any form of external manipulation. Malachor's powers could not touch them, and the people of Iliara lived in freedom, their thoughts their own. Chapter 3 At the heart of Iliara's resistance stood their leader, Lysandra. She was a warrior of unmatched skill, her body adorned with the ceremonial armor of her ancestors, enhanced with the light-infused technology of her people. Her headband gleamed brightly, a constant reminder of the protection it offered. She had seen the devastation caused by Malika's reign, and though her people lived in peace, they knew it would not last. The mage's darkness was spreading, his hunger for power reaching beyond the mainland. Eventually, 
he would come for them. Lysandra stood on the shores of Iliara, looking out across the sea toward the distant horizon where Urvan lay, hidden in shadows. Her heart was heavy, but her resolve was firm. We cannot wait, she said to her council, her voice strong and clear. The darkness grows stronger every day, and soon even our island will not be safe. We must act before Malachor's control spreads beyond his lands. But we are few compared to his forces, one of the council elders replied, his brow furrowed. And even with our technology, we have never faced power like his. Lysandra tightened her grip on the hilt of her sword. That is why we must use the gifts Solandir has given us. With our headbands, we can resist his control, and with our knowledge, we can find a way to break his hold on the people of Urvan. The council murmured in agreement, though the fear of Malachor's dark magic lingered in their minds. But Lysandra knew they had no choice. They were the only ones who could stand against him. In the shadows of Valthorn, Malachor remained unaware of the light that would soon rise against him. His dominion over the minds of Urvan's people was complete. But across the sea, a light was gathering strength. The time for sacrifice was nearing its end, and soon Lysandra would lead her people into battle, armed with the light of Solandir and the knowledge that not even the darkest magic could control a free mind. The people of Iliara lived in a balance of light and technology, deeply connected to the earth while mastering the forces of their divine gifts. But beneath the surface of peace, a growing awareness stirred. Soon, the darkness of Malachor would attempt to reach even this sacred island, and they would have to defend their home, their light, and their future. The sun hung low in the sky, casting long golden rays across the shimmering shore of Iliara. Waves, glowing faintly with the light of Solandir, crashed gently against the silver sands. The people of Iliara moved with purpose, preparing for the inevitable assault. Lysandra stood at the forefront, her hand resting on the hilt of her sword, its blade faintly glowing with the same power that coursed through the island. A sudden ripple of darkness broke the horizon, where the light of Iliara met the sea. Malachor's forces had arrived. The Dark Mage had sent his twisted creations, beasts and soldiers of shadow, their forms wreathed in black mist. They surged forth from the depths of the sea on boats made of dark energy, their oars slicing through the glowing waters like knives. The creatures that led the charge were grotesque abominations, twisted by Malachor's dark magic. Tall and gangly, with elongated limbs, their eyes burned with hatred for the light. The first boat made landfall with a resounding crash, black claws scraping the sands as the creatures leapt from the ship. Behind them, the dark soldiers followed, humanoid figures shrouded in thick black robes, their faces hidden beneath hooded masks. Hold your ground, Lysandra called, her voice clear and commanding. She raised her sword high, and the warriors of Iliara, clad in gleaming armor, their headbands glowing, formed a defensive line along the beach. The light-infused steel of their weapons gleamed brightly, ready to meet the darkness head on. The creatures charged, their screams piercing the air like daggers. Lysandra met the first one head on, her sword blazing with light as it clashed against the creature's claws. The force of the impact sent a shock wave rippling through the sand, but Lysandra held her ground. With a swift motion, she parried the creature's attack and drove her blade into its chest, the light searing through its shadowy form. It screeched and dissolved into a cloud of black mist vanquished by the light. All along the shore, the clash of battle rang out as light met darkness. The warriors of Iliara fought with grace and precision, their weapons dancing through the air with the speed of lightning. Each strike was infused with the power of Solandir, and where their blades touched, the darkness was undone. But Malika's forces were relentless. More boats landed on the shores, disgorging wave after wave of dark soldiers. The shadow beasts moved with unnatural speed, their claws tearing through armor and flesh alike. One of Lysandra's warriors fell beside her, his headband knocked loose in the chaos. In an instant, his eyes glazed over, and he turned his weapon on his own comrades, his mind enslaved by Malika's distant command. Lysandra's heart sank at the sight, 
but she fought on, knowing that every moment counted. She raised her hand toward the fallen warrior, and from her palm, a burst of pure light erupted, striking him. The headband flickered back into place, and the warrior collapsed to the ground, freed from the Dark Mage's control. Stay together, Lysandra shouted, cutting through another creature. We fight for the light of Iliara. The battle was fierce, but the warriors of Iliara had trained for this moment. With their headbands protecting them from mind control and their weapons blessed by Solondir, they slowly began to push the dark forces back toward the water. Suddenly the sky darkened. A shadow loomed overhead, and Lysandra looked up to see a figure descending from the clouds, Malachor himself. Cloaked in darkness, his eyes burning with hatred, he raised his hands, and a wave of oppressive energy washed over the battlefield. His voice, dripping with malice, echoed across the shore. You think your light can stop me, Lysandra? He sneered. I am the harbinger of shadows. You will fall, just as all others before you. With a flick of his wrist, Malachor sent a blast of dark magic toward the Iliaran warriors. The ground trembled as the force of the spell struck, knocking several of them off their feet. Darkness began to spread from the point of impact, consuming the light. Lysandra's heart pounded in her chest, but she would not falter. She stepped forward, raising her sword high. The blade gleamed with the light of Solandir, and as she plunged it into the ground, a pulse of radiant energy surged outward. The darkness recoiled, retreating from the light. Malika's eyes narrowed, but he was not done. He raised his hands again, summoning the full force of his dark power. But Lysandra was ready. Now, she shouted, and from behind her, the Iliaran warriors unleashed their secret weapon, shimmering orbs of concentrated light energy. These orbs, developed by their engineers with Solandir's guidance, were powerful enough to disrupt even the strongest magic. The orbs were launched into the sky, and with a blinding flash, they exploded, raining beams of pure light down upon the battlefield. The dark creatures screamed as the light tore through them, their forms dissolving into nothingness. Even Malika staggered under the onslaught, his dark shield flickering as it struggled to withstand the force. Lysandra seized the moment. She charged forward, her sword raised, her heart blazing with the power of the light. Malika turned just in time to see her coming, his eyes widening in fury. Their blades clashed, Malika's shadowy scythe against Lysandra's sword of light. The impact sent a shockwave through the air, the very ground shaking beneath them. Darkness and light warred in the space between them, each struggling for dominance. For a moment, it seemed that the darkness would overwhelm, Malika's strength too great. But Lysandra, fueled by the will of her people and the light of Solandir, pushed forward. With a roar, she drove her sword through the barrier of darkness, striking Malachor's weapon from his hands. The blade of light found its mark, piercing the mage's side. Malachor howled in pain, his form flickering as the light seared through him. With a final burst of energy, he dissolved into shadow, vanishing into the ether. The battle was over. The forces of darkness, leaderless and broken, retreated back into the sea. The warriors of Iliara stood victorious, their heads held high as the light of Solandir once again bathed the island in its warm embrace. Lysandra wiped the sweat from her brow, her heart still pounding. She knew this was only a small victory. Malachor would return. But today, the light had triumphed, and as long as she and her people stood, the darkness would never claim Iliara.